Hello, and welcome to All Talk Oncology. I'm your host, Kenny Perkins, a.k.a. The Cancer Guy. And we have a phenomenal guest on our show today. You know, we were talking about cancer. There's so many moving parts to that. And one of the things that is so important as you go through this journey is mindset. And our next guest, let me tell you, she has helped so many people with getting the right mindset. She has written books on what it's like to feed your body and your soul, how to reach into uh, yourself and bring out that light so that every day you're doing something to inspire your soul. So as you go through this journey and so needed, right? She's phenomenal. She has been uh, featured in In Style Magazine, uh, The Chalkboard, uh, L magazine. It's she. She is all over the place. She has kind of crossed all the spectrums. And so, please join me in bringing in Jolie Hart to the show. Hi, Kenny. It's so nice to be here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's, I'm so so delighted to have you, and this is such a privilege. Thank you for joining us. You know, Jolie. So, talk to me about how you ended up getting involved in this, in this field and helping women and inspiring them? You know, it was so much of my own personal journey at its foundation. So I worked as a magazine beauty editor. You mentioned In Style Magazine, and I did work there for a time as a beauty editor. And during my tenure, I mean, it, it was, you'd think it was a dream job, but during my tenure, I had um, I had skin problems, including cystic acne and eczema that just um, were not were not solvable. I couldn't find a product or an expert, even though I would go to celebrity dermatologists and get all kinds of treatments that would find the root cause of what was going on in my body. And it wasn't until I decided to take a step back and really use my abilities as a journalist at that time to research you know, what the connection was between our bodies and our skin health. So what's going on, um, you know, looking into Ayurveda, Chinese medicine, dermatology, genomics. So what's going on with your genes and in shifting my own lifestyle and, and diet, um, saw a profound change in my body and my skin over the course of about a year. And from there, I decided to become a health coach so that I could share that information with more women, because it's not the stuff that I was writing about in fashion or beauty magazine. We weren't talking about the power of food and how it fuels you. Um, but a few years into, into that aspect of my career, I developed a chronic illness and learning to live through that um, has given me so much insight on the power of your energy and your mindset as you were as you were speaking to earlier. So my most recent book, Ignite Your Light, is all about not just physical beauty, but the energetic beauty that really has the power to change your physical body, as well as your experience of joy and your resilience. So that's kind of how I got to where I am. And through this um, part of my career, I've been able to support a, an amazing um, nonprofit here in the Philadelphia area called Unite for Her. And I know we could probably talk more about them, but I am their, their beauty editor. So I help to share information on selecting the healthiest beauty products during cancer treatment and beyond. And I've worked oh, with them for about six years in that capacity. Um, just helping to women to, you know, feel empowered and feel more educated when it comes to shopping for products and to also nourishing their bodies so that they can look and feel well during treatment and beyond. Absolutely. Right. I, and what a gift that is, you know, because one of the things as you go through, through this journey of cancer, it's hard to feel that inner beauty, you know, because you've been hit with something just so horrific and I've seen these patients, you know, as a, as a as a therapist, you know, you're in with them every single day and administering the treatments, and you see, you know, the effect that this this has on them. You know, some of the patients I recall coming in and just didn't have much to say. You know, just so quiet. And and when you talk to their family, it was completely out of character for them. And so when you think about what you're doing, Jolene, it's, it's amazing. You're able to help them with their inner beauty, to help them to kind of reconnect again, right, with that inner self and, and feel, feel the beauty from within. So that, that's, an, that's an amazing thing. 
I think it is too. And, and I think for a long time, I didn't really understand why it was so powerful until I started looking at beauty within the context of your energy and how, how impactful that is for your body. Because in essence, you know, self-care, it, it's not trivial, even though we always hear, oh, self-care, uh, putting on a face mask, you know, pampering yourself. It has actual, you know, real physical effects in your body that support the healing process and that support your resilience. So it makes the darkest days more bearable. And I think that is always what I've loved in essence about beauty and the beauty industry is that it has the power to shift your energy in a real profound way. Um, even as you know, you're putting on lipstick or you're, you're, um, you know, you're making yourself smell great or whatever it is that makes you feel wonderful in that moment has real power for your physical healing and your joy day to day. You know, I, I have to agree with you. You know, I, I'm not in the lipstick. <laughs> category, <laughs> right, you know, whatever it is. <laughs> you know, for me, you know, you know, having a great shower, shaving, yes. you know, putting on some clothes and, and feeling great, you know, and, and feeding my soul. Sometimes, you know, even retail therapy has been something that has, has helped out. Being able to write some of the things that I have been appreciative of, you know, has helped out. So when you talk about be building up that inner beauty, it goes across both sexes. And it's important. It's important for all of us. I think men, for the most part, they, they have a hard time to maybe connecting with that. But it's important. It's important. And especially when you're feeding your soul to feel good. And, right. and you look at, you know, a lot, I've never had cancer, um, but I've treated, I've treated thousands of people with cancer. But even just from a human standpoint, it's so important, you know, we go through these ups and downs in life and learn, learning how to uh, feed our soul and, and right. be, come back is so important. So right. what, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, that, that resilience that we're talking about is created one choice at a time. Every time you choose to shift your energy and take that minute to care for yourself or put on the fabric that's soft against your skin and makes you feel good, that's what resilience is. Resilience is not waking up and saying, I'm gonna get through this and be resilient and bounce back. It's those little choices that you make hundreds of times a day that, that are resilience. Yes, and, and thank you for um, bringing that out because a lot of times people don't know how you know, they go, well, I want that, but I don't know what to do. And I hope you picked up on that, Jim. She said that it is the little choices that we make throughout the day. And so it's those little choices that add up, would you say? Absolutely. And, and the, that smallest step, that one shift, mm -hmm. the, the one food you eat, the thing you do, that can lead to this, that snowball effect that makes it more possible for you to do it again and repeat it. It's almost like the ability that we have with our brains, that neuroplasticity, the more times that you default toward a feeling of gratitude or toward a feeling of happiness or, or safety um, or just relaxation, the more you build that brain pathway and that becomes the default for your brain. It's like strengthening a muscle. Uh, it's the same thing with resilience. You have to work at it, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Yes. So give us a little insight. You, you've, you've, you're working there at Unite for Her and you, I'm sure you've dealt with so many cancer patients. Give us an a insight on some of the things you help them to to see? What is one of the common denominators that you see with some of the patients? I mean, I think it's one thing that has impressed itself upon me over the years is um, the number of patients who are able to find joy in the here and now, because they're in a, in a messy part of life. They're in a part that is in incredibly challenging, maybe more challenging than most people will have to deal with. But, but when they surround themselves with something that brings them joy or comfort, in that moment, they're able to, again, change their brain, change their biology, and that helps to get them through. And, and I think that was a lesson that was taught to me even before I went through my own journey with chronic illness is that it's so powerful when you see someone have the grace to be able to do that. And, and that, is, that, that is what gets you through. It's looking at the here and the now and maybe not worrying about tomorrow or even thinking about the past, but finding joy in the moment and how powerful that can be. Absolutely. 